second. Okay. Well, first off, um, thank you for coming. And I want to start off and thank Healthy Horizons for letting me come because I begged them to come let me do this. And the reason I'm here is just to raise awareness. I'm not going to ask you to quit doing something. I'm not going to ask you to do anything, but think about your choices as you make them. We, are start, we have started, uh, Halloween started that long stretch of awful in my book that goes from Halloween to the day after Easter when they have the clearance sales of the bunny candy. So he, I'm going to talk to you about why I'm interested. I'm a licensed psychologist. I've been doing therapy forever. And I've talked to a lot of college students, a lot of faculty and staff. I've talked to a lot of people. And a common theme is, oh my God, my health, my wellness, my ability to deal with things is affected by what I eat and how I perceive my health. So I became interested in that and I have personal interest in it. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And also I am going into the field of wellness coaching and health wellness education. So that being the case, you guys are going to be going on a ride with me through discussion about food and what we do with food and how it affects us. So let's start with our experiment. Okay. I'd like for you to take your slice of uh, gala apple. Oh, you're going to have to do it too, Kelly. And if it tastes a little lemony, it's just acidulated water, which is water with a little lemon in it. Just nutritionally, you should know that the average apple, which is an average apple, has 95 calories in it. So when you take a bite, I want you to count how many bites, how much you have to chew the apple to get that chewed and down. Would you like one? No? Yeah? You sure? So count how many times you chew the apple to complete it. And the thing to remember here is not processed really overly processed. And Dawn, here's your homework. <laughs> your homework. You have to take the apple, count how many times you, it takes to chew it. Because I'll tell you that in a minute. So keep chewing your apple. And the thing I want you to be aware of is the consistency of the apple, the texture, that you've got the fiber in the apple, that you've got a lot of fiber and nutrients in the peel. What breaks my heart is when I've watched cooking shows and the first thing they do is they, they just whisk the peel right off. You basically, you might as well not eat the apple at this point. So please think about that the next time you take an apple. Okay, how many times, for those of you who have just now gotten finished, how many chews did it take for you to chew up the apple 22, 25, 17, okay. So d just think about that that's how many times it took for you to chew the apple. Okay, now I'd like to for you to take out your Snickers bar, but before you eat it, don't eat it yet, I'd like for you to, to know that the slice of apple you had was just 16 calories. A whole apple is 95. This snack size fun size Snickers is 80 calories. And we'll talk about the fat grams and the rest of it later. And then the other thing I want to tell you, I'm going to do the spoiler alert. The reason why I'm having you have the apple first is, again, not processed, lots of fiber, lots of nutrients. They were bragging in a book that I would highly recommend, The End of Overeating, Taking Control of uh, the Insatiable American Appetite by Dr. David Kessler, who was previously our uh, Health and Human Services Director. Very, very good book. And he was talking about, and it's in the um, references, and I can give you a copy of that afterward. What they were bragging about, as far as Snickers is, that this is the most least involving culinary experience you can have. It's designed to break down with as few bites and few chews as possible to melt dissolve away, and whisk away with it the pieces of the nuts. So I want you to think about that as you have your Snickers bar. So take your Snickers bar, en enjoy it if you will. If you don't want to have sugar, I completely support you not having sugar. Um, but if you do have the Snickers, be aware of are you chewing it, how much you're chewing it, and the dissolvability. 
that you're getting with it. And they really, they brag about that the, sounds, that the glob of stuff you're chewing will take the nuts with it so you get the nuttiness, the mouthfeel of the fat of the nuts, the fat and the sweetness of the chocolate and the caramel, but it's not a lot of work and effort. So if, if anybody's done with their Snickers, how many chews did it take Seven and gone. Did you have any traces of nut left? Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you, if you're comfortable sharing this, would you feel like one would be enough of these? No. And this is the, this is the crux of why we're here talking about this today, is because what you get compared to the apple is higher fat, sugar, salt, little caffeine from the chocolate content, and because it is so easily digestible and highly calorically packed, you've got it in your system and you want more. And I can tell you how many of the apple slices are you going to have before you say, okay, had enough. Okay? So the reason why I, I so when you think about what you're going to be eating, I want you to remember about how processed is it? How does that affect me? What does that do to my body? I'll tell you what it does to a body. It makes you 85 pounds heavier. Um, this is me in 2004. This is not my ex-husband at the time, the, my husband at the time. This was one of my interns who begged, oh, Carol, please, let's get a photo at the last day of internship. And I was like, please, God, let's not. And, um, and it was that day that I had made a decision about a lifestyle change. So I, I don't talk in terms of diet. I talk about healthy nutrition, nutritional living and balance. And that's the crux of the message. Let's talk about the cost of obesity. This is really scary. This looks at health costs in 2013 of the 50 states. And if you look, the lowest cost per person in each state for 2013 is Colorado. Whoa, sorry, I forgot this is a smart board. Colorado at 378. And the highest is West Virginia, $764 per person for obesity-related expenses. And then you look at Indiana, and we're high average at $673 per person. Now, I'm going to talk to just a slight few of you. How do you define emotional eating? How do you, does anyone want to volunteer when they know that when they are eating is not for nutritional purposes? Well, yes, Julie. Fill the void. You're looking for something from food that doesn't normally come from food. Sarah, how about you? Uh-huh. Yes. Absolutely. My, the mindlessness of it. Yes. 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 Like, like the food's going to give you additional energy that you don't already have. And it makes sense. I'll, I'll exp and I'll talk more about that. Yes. 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 That's an excellent point, and I will say that in the reading that I was doing in the uh, Dr. Kessler book, is in Europe, they don't bring food to meetings. 
Now, think of how many meetings that we go to that's like, oh, man, this is a bad meeting. There are no snacks. And what makes a good meeting? I, I remember once, a million years ago, Vic Bashini, who was our Vice President of Student Affairs, had Aramark do a cheesecake bar. I mean, it might as well have been death by cheesecake. And there was every kind of cheesecake. And, and to this day, it's like, oh, do you remember Vic and the cheesecake? So, but in Europe, they don't do that. In Europe, they go to meetings and they, they don't have to have food at every interaction. There's a, a, another good book called Crave by Cynthia Bullock that talks about cravings and emotional eating. And she was talking about assessing your relationship with food. So one, do you feel compelled to eat when an urge to binge comes on? Um, if, do you smell something, see something, see a commercial, a trigger, whatever it is, once you see that, do you have to follow that? Have you always said, I have issues with food? Because I've talked to, to people who will say, yeah, I have a really bad relationship with food, and I'm thinking, we don't have relationships with inanimate objects. <laughs> but we do. I, I, I have that. I had that. We have negative weight associations with fat being bad and thin being good. Think, listen the next time you go to a family function, some, something, and you'll hear people say, oh, I'm going to be bad today and have whatever. Or, oh, look at your plate. You're being really good. And I would say, yeah, keep your eyes and hands to yourself. Um, do you frequently lie about the amount of food you eat? And I, I'm going to say, as, as a compulsive overeater, food addict is how I identify myself, I was the queen of, when I was out, I ate so, I, you know, I had the halo firmly implanted over my head. No one would know that I was stopping at fast food places on the way home or on the way over to the healthy meal. And if you would have asked me, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm doing fine. I don't know how I keep this weight on, this extra 85 pounds. And do I often eat when I'm alone? Do I wait till I'm alone to eat? 